Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. A while back, a neighbor of mine gave me this chest of drawers that her father had built back in the late 70s or early 80s. It's pretty well built. The top could use a little love. I wanted to keep this piece as original as possible, so I'm just going to update it a little bit with the style of my own. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Truebill for sponsoring this video. If you've been looking for a way to lower your bills and take control of your personal finances, Truebill is something you need to take a look at. Truebill is an all-in-one personal finance app that allows members to save more and spend less, helping them get on the path to financial freedom. Simply connect your financial accounts to the Truebill app and the personal finance manager will assist you in managing your subscriptions, lowering bills, and build your savings in this all-in-one convenient platform. I personally love the feature that allows you to cancel unwanted subscriptions. I'm the worst at forgetting about services that I don't use. Truebill will find those subscriptions for you and allow you to cancel them with just the click of a button. Truebill has allowed me to set up budgets by automatically monitoring my spending by category and letting me know when I exceed spending budgets. There's also a feature to help you lower those bills by simply uploading a photo of your bill and tapping a button. Truebill can help negotiate these bills for you including cell phone, internet, and cable bills. You can download Truebill right now and try it out for free by going to truebill.com slash that shabby guy or clicking the link down in the description. Before I get started on any project, I remove all of the hardware and put it in a safe place. With the hardware out of the way, I can clean all of this dirt and grime off so that it doesn't interfere with my paint finish later on. It's better to do this before you sand so that all of this gunk doesn't gum up your sandpaper. When I took out the drawers, I noticed the inside was pretty dirty and had a lot of spider webs that needed to be cleaned up. It's a good idea to double check for this, especially if you're selling furniture to other people. Honestly, it's a better idea to look for this and clean it up as soon as you get home with new pieces so that you don't have any of these things running around your house while you're waiting to get around to your project. With the base clean, I moved on to stripping the top. Instead of using chemical stripper this time, I decided to use my Surf Prep 5 inch sander to do the job. I don't do a lot of stripping by sanding, so I wanted to get a little bit of experience in so that whenever other people have questions about it, I can give them accurate information. I started off by stripping the original finish with 100 grit sandpaper and then came back with 120, 150, and finally 180. I'm essentially scratching up the wood whenever I'm doing this sanding, so stepping up into finer grits allows me to blend these scratches together so that there aren't any imperfections whenever I go to stain it later on. Failing to do this runs the risk of getting spirals or pigtails in your finish. You may not see them now, but when you apply the stain later on, they'll definitely show up. Once I had the top stripped, I taped it off so that I can move on to painting the base. To prime this piece, I pulled out the good old Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint. There are several reasons why I use spray paint on furniture. It's faster than applying it with a brush. It acts as a sealer to keep bleeds from interacting with my water-based paint. It provides a little bit better surface for the paint to adhere to, and it covers up the original wood tone so that I don't have to use as much paint later on. I'll do two coats of this, waiting about 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat depending on the weather. Once that's dry, I can move on to applying my paint. The paint I'm going to be spraying out of my Graco Project Painter Plus is this Valspar Signature. This is the same white that I used in my last video, except this time we're not going to be glazing over it. No matter what sprayer you're using, it's a good idea to do a little test run like I did on the wall here. That way you don't get any surprises whenever you go to spray your furniture. As you can see, the paint's covering really well, especially because I applied the primer first. I ended up only needing to spray two coats for this project. Each coat takes approximately 30 to 45 seconds. I let this dry for about 30 minutes in between each coat.
Overnight, a cold front and bad weather had moved in, and if you saw one of my recent videos where I had an issue spraying polyurethane in cold weather, I didn't want to have the same issues this time, so I decided I was going to top coat this piece by hand. I found that sanding the surface before you apply water-based polyurethane by hand allows you to get a smooth finish with less streaks. I don't normally do this whenever I'm spraying furniture, this is just me adjusting to the weather. With the base fully painted and ready to go, I got back to work on the top to finish it off. After I removed the tape, I used some fine sandpaper to give it a final sanding just to make sure there aren't any imperfections and to get rid of any residue that might be left over from the tape. Before I applied my stain, I applied this pre-stain. I don't use this very often, but I've been using it more recently just to make sure that I don't get any funky blemishes coming up in my stain finish. It's really simple to use. You just wipe it on, let it sit for about 15 minutes, wipe off any excess, and then you're ready to stain. To stain the top, I'm using Minwax Dark Walnut Oil-Based Wood Stain. This is also very easy to use. You simply apply it, wait about 15 minutes, and then wipe off the excess. If it's not dark enough for you, you can apply more after a few hours to darken it up or use a darker stain. I did get stain on the paint here, but that's not a big deal. All you need to do is use some mineral spirits or paint thinner on a rag and it wipes right off. I was really happy with how the top was coming along. This needs to dry a little bit before I can top coat it. In the meantime, I'm gonna start working on the handles. To strip and refinish the handles, I pretty much repeated the same process that I did on the top, except that I used my Surf Prep 3x4. This is more of a detail sander meant for smaller projects, while the five inch is a lot more aggressive and gets a lot more work done. The five inch is just way too much for wood this small. Once I got everything stripped, I applied the same Minwax Dark Walnut Wood Stain. I didn't opt to use any pre-stain on the handles and it didn't seem to really make a difference. While working on the handles, I was staring at the base of this piece and I felt the look was going to be unbalanced by having the top wood, the handles wood, and the base white. So I decided I was going to strip it and stain it to match the rest of the piece. This is going to take more work, but this piece is kind of sentimental to me, and I wanted to make sure that I got it done right. To strip the base, I used Clean Strips, Quick Strip, and the 15-minute formula. They have a 30-minute formula that is technically made for paint, but this 15-minute formula eats through this paint in just a few minutes. So I recommend if you're going to get stripper that you get the 15-minute stripper versus the 30-minute stripper because it works much faster. The paint crackling means the stripper is working, once the stripper has done its job, I'll use a scraper to get it off my wood. Then I applied it a second time so that I could get any of the remaining wood finish off that didn't come off on the first pass. Even after my second pass, there was still some paint left behind, but this will come off later whenever I scrub it down with mineral spirits and steel wool. I'll leave this for now and move on to stripping the sides. I was worried about getting stripper on the areas that I didn't want to strip, so I taped it off to protect it. This seemed like a good idea at the time, but I found out later on that it wasn't going to be that simple.
the paint stripped off nice and easy but whenever i took the tape off i found out that it did literally nothing to prevent the stripper from getting on the paint unfortunately the stripper traveled underneath the paint and underneath the tape there's nothing i can do about it now except for fix it to do this i scraped off what was loose with the scraper then came back with mineral spirits and steel wool to neutralize the stripper so that it doesn't affect the paint job i'm about to do i'm basically scrubbing off all of the loose paint up to the point to where my paint finish is still nice and durable this gave me a chance to scratch it with my fingernails to show you how durable this finish is. All you need to do is prep properly to get a durable finish like this. This is almost ready to be painted. It just needs to be feathered out a little bit. I used my detail sander and some 220 grit sandpaper to take care of that. The purpose of feathering the paint out is so that it blends in with the wood. This way, when I come back to paint over it, you don't see this jagged line where the paint was chipped off. Once I got everything blended, I used the same Rust-Oleum spray paint to prime it, then taped it off and applied a couple of coats of paint, sanding in between each coat so that it all blended in together. With my mistake pretty much fixed, I focused on stripping the other side while my last coat of paint dries. Obviously there's no point in applying tape to keep the stripper off my wood so I just decided to do it by hand. My line ended up being nice and clean, turns out I didn't even need the tape in the first place. I scrubbed the remaining stripper residue off with mineral spirits and steel wool. And by the time I got all of this done, the top was dry enough for me to start sanding, so I moved on to that. For this final sanding step, I'm using 180 grit sandpaper to sand out any imperfections so that when I come back to stain it, we don't have any paint markings in the finish. I got a little crazy with the sandpaper so I had to fix this little area. All I did was dab just a little bit of paint, let it dry, and then sand it later to blend it all in. With that ordeal finally over, I was finally able to apply the same stain that I applied to the top and the handles to get everything to match. I did have a little area that had some sanding scratches that I didn't notice. If this happens to you, one of the best things you can do is immediately sand it so that you can sand those scratches out, apply your stain, wipe it off, and move on. Once I was done staining, I came back and cleaned up my mess with mineral spirits and a rag. Toasty is gonna be helping me top coat this piece. I dunk him in water and then wring him out so he remains damp. Then I dunk them in the water-based polyurethane and then rub a layer of the polyurethane onto the surface of the dresser, working quickly so that I can come back and wipe off any imperfections without overworking the polyurethane before it starts drying up. 
A lot of people have issues with bubbles whenever they're working with water-based polyurethane. I found that when I'm using a sponge, I can oversaturate the surface with the polyurethane, then come back using lighter pressure so that the sponge soaks up these bubbles and imperfections, leaving me with a nice smooth surface. I applied three coats and let each coat dry for about 30 minutes. I didn't have to sand in between each coat on this one, it seemed like gravity did most of the work. If you do get streaks in your finish, allow it to dry for an hour or so, then come back with some 220 grit sandpaper, sand it smooth, and apply some more. This allows you to knock down the streaks from your previous finish and should allow your final coat to dry smooth. Here's what the top looks like after the third and final coat. It's nice and smooth, you can see a reflection in the finish. Now I'm ready to take care of the base. I pretty much repeated the same process as I did on the top, but because there's a risk of runs and drips on the sides, I use thinner coats. As I said before, thinner coats will cause streaking, so I'll need to come back and sand this to get it nice and smooth. Once you think you're done, it's a good idea to give everything a good once over to make sure you don't have any runs or drips. You can see here I found one on the side before it dried up, so I was able to wipe it with a damp sponge rather than having to come back later and sand it. Here's what it looks like after two coats. You can see it's glossing up, but it's also a little streaky, so I'm going to sand this down and then come back with a final third coat. The process is the same for the drawers, but they have these little lines that the polyurethane wanted to get in, so I decided it'd be better for me to do these outside of the dresser instead of while they were in the dresser. This prevents me from getting runs and drips at the tops and bottoms and sides of the drawer. This will need some time to dry a little bit before I sand it and do my final coat, so I moved on to the handles. I decided to top coat the handles with aerosol lacquer instead of applying with water-based polyurethane by hand. I did this because trying to handle these small pieces of wood while your hand is wet with polyurethane was just going to be a big mess, so I felt like this was going to be a lot faster. It's just as durable. I applied three thin coats, waiting about 15 minutes in between each coat. Then I gave it a light sanding to smooth everything down and applied one final thicker coat to finish them off. By the time I'd finished up the last coat on the handles, the drawers were ready for me to sand them and finish them off as well. You can see here how there's streaks in the finish but it's also really glossy. You can see my reflection here. Just a little quick sanding and one more application of polyurethane and I'm gonna be done. the drawers top coated and put back in, I can put the hardware back on and get done with this piece. I made some decisions on this piece that cost me some extra time, but I think it was worth it in the long run, and hopefully someone out there will learn something from my mistakes. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this project. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit that button and ring the bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. I'm going to be posting videos out more often. Thanks for being patient with me. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all again soon.